Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Volkswagen, and I'm checking out a 2024 Volkswagen Atlas in the SE trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 255-50 Nexen tires wrapped around 20-inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Pure White, and Pure White is just a regular white. There's no pearl coat or anything like that. So looking here at the front, check it out. Uh, it looks very impressive. Now they changed the headlight design, the badge here on the front illuminates. Uh, so in low light, you'll see this illuminate. Also the headlight, daytime running lights are connected all the way across the top of the grill as well. Very impressive. So the grill is mostly a matte black, but you also have the chrome accents there that goes from one side to the other, kind of emphasizing the width of the vehicle. Parking sensors across the front as well. You can see them integrated into this black section here and here. Now there's no fog lights. It does have the all weather lights though, uh, cornering lights and an adapt adaptive headlight system. So it's a adaptive projector and reflector headlight system. Taking a look at the profile of the vehicle, uh, it has this matte black portion that extends here from the front all the way around each wheel well as well as the base of the doors as well. And the doors go all the way down to the side of the vehicle, to the complete bottom here. Body colored handles, body colored upper portion of the side mirrors, as well as a matte black uh, pillar right here. And so right in there it kind of solidifies the glass. Uh, as well. And there's, uh, th you see the top portion is a matte black, the bottom portion is a chrome strip right in here. This is what the key looks like. It's a full proximity key system. And really impressive looking key. It's all gloss black here and has the chrome all along the edges. Uh, it has a little bit of weight to it, but overall it's sleek and easy to slip in and out of your pocket. Uh, so it does have the remote start, lock, unlock, the ability to open up the power lift gate and a panic button. Let's go ahead and press that panic button. So it has a nice strong horn. So as long as you have this key with you, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's on the outside of either the driver or passenger door, actually all doors have this uh, feature. Um, there's a little sensor right in here and you see that little dimple um, and you put your hand on that finger or whatever and it locks the doors. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle. There's a sensor here and the key's on the outside of the door. So it allows me access to the vehicle. Uh, there's also a physical key location uh, behind this cover right here. You take this cover off and you'll be able to put a key in there and turn it. And there's a physical key inside the key fob as well. Now I mentioned that the door goes all the way to the bottom of the vehicle. And the reason for that, you can see there's actually a seal down here. So when the door is shut, it covers up this whole threshold area and making it less likely to get dirty while you're driving. So getting in and out of the vehicle, uh, less likely to get your clothes dirty uh, getting in and out. Here's the inside of the passenger side door. Very impressive, mostly black, uh, but it does have this uh, simulated wood here at the top that's really nice. Really nice light colored wood here. So this is a soft touch injection molded type. Uh, this is a soft touch kind of like a, a vinyl type material. You have perforations just below the stitching. Uh, this is soft, kind of rubbery soft for your armrest. This is a handle, but also an enclosed pocket right here. It has a little rubber mat at the bottom, nice. The bottom portion is a hard plastic. Uh, you do have a reflector there as well. Large pocket in here. Here's the threshold with a aluminum sill plate. Manually adjusted seats here on the passenger side, but it does have the ability to raise and lower the seat. So it has a height adjustment. Uh, adjust the back tilt and then you can of course move the seat forward and back All right, these are a synthetic leather Really impressive uh, diamond stitching here quilted uh, Nicely bolstered but not too intrusive on your body and now you notice that they include uh, this Cloth here where it meets up with the hard plastic. That's a nice touch to keep help this protect this side surface here a little bit better uh, over time these are heated seats as well. All right, there's the floorboard with the floor mat. Very impressive floor mat. Has like the rubber mat. And you see this compartment here. Now that's utilized by the driver or passenger. Uh, you could put a bag or whatever in there. It does have a rubberized little pad in the bottom as well. You can take out and clean, put it back in. 
So this is a hard touch surface here. Locking glove compartment. Nice big smooth plastic on the inside. Now we have some more of that perforations right in here. This is like a vinyl type material similar to the door here and here. Gloss black, the wood grain. And I like the way the wood grain kind of goes behind that, uh, that screen as well. That's kind of neat. And the dash is a kind of rubbery soft, non-reflective dash. You see the opening uh, to enter and exit the vehicle is very big here in the front. Swing of the door is nice, just plenty of room to get in and out of the vehicle. Uh, same thing with the back, check it out, just lots of room getting in and out. The swing of the door is also nice, uh, swings out nicely, gets out of your way. Uh, so getting in and out, front or back, no problem, plenty of room. Uh, it's just an impressive vehicle. Atlas was very impressive when I first saw it, how much room it has uh, inside compared to the outside. So the inside of the back door does have the shade, it's retractable. You can get that out of the way if you want. And then you have, you have the wood grain back here, just like the front. Soft touch, here, here, here. Enclosed pocket, another pocket, and then you have pockets there as well as a bottle holder as well. There's a threshold area and it has a little bit of plastic uh, protection there for getting into the second and third rows. Now the second row seats, uh, very little bolstering. It's really easy. It's like a bench seat. You just basically slide in and out, easy to get in and out. It does have the uh, car seat attachments there and they're located right in here. So it's really easy to get to. No covers to cover them up and get in the way. There's an armrest with cup holders there as well. Uh, now there's car seats at attachments in the center as well as the sides. So you can technically maybe put three car seats in the second row. That's pretty interesting. Check out the leg room, almost a completely flat floor. On the back of both front seats, you do have mat pockets. There's climate control adjustments back here because it is a uh, tri-zone climate control. And then you have USB-C charge ports here as well as a power inverter. You can see that the seats also recline a little bit. This one is at the furthest point and the other seat is in the more forward position. So you can see the different positions there. Uh, now you use this button to do that. Now that button, this uh, lever here, is also used to fold the seat as well. So you can fold it down and this would be like a cargo mode. Now let's say you don't want cargo mode, you want to move the seat out of the way so you can access the third row. Well, you use this lever right here, it lifts up, and when it unlatches, it gives you a little uh, orange indicator there so that you know that the seat is not secure if you don't have it fully latched back. Uh, so when you move it forward, it's kind of assisted like so. You notice it, it holds its shape. So if you have a car seat in place, you're able to keep the car seat there and then you can move it forward uh, to the extent uh, it'll allow. And now you can access the third row right through here and check it out. Look how high those third row seats are from the floor. Like an adult could sit in the third row. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Now there's cup holders back here. There's storage compartments here as well. You see a little cubby over there with USB charge ports. And ju yeah, just a lot of space there in the third row. And it does maintain the diamond quilting in the third row seats as well. And the stitching. And these seats do fold down if you need to add to your cargo space. The fuel door is here on the passenger side and it locks with the key. So when the vehicle's locked, it will lock this door as well. And it has a traditional cap, tether, and a little post to hang the cap while you're pumping gas right there. And you notice you can use regular fuel. You can look at the back of the vehicle. The roof rails here are a matte black and then the shark fin antenna is a gloss black. Uh, there's a third brake light at the top of the glass here in the rear spoiler. Uh, which is has these little gloss black portions there as well Does have a rear wiper of course the backup camera is located right in here a little bit offset not sure why uh, But it's in there next to the tag it's kind of tacked on
Tail lights are LED, very impressive looking. The rear badge in low light also illuminates, but in red, the front one is white. The rear one is red, a really neat looking. Now you have parking sensors across the back, just like the front integrated into the matte plaque portions here. Uh, there is a towing package here as well. Uh, it does have the seven way outlet there. And the exhaust uh, tips are actually hidden under the vehicle, as you probably saw in the beginning of the vi video. Um, but they have these little pieces right here, kind of making them look like exhaust surrounds, but it's not actually the case. Go ahead and look in the cargo area. You can use the key to pop it up, or you can just press this button under here, and it is powered. You see it's hard plastic on the inside of the lift gate. And if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this is your cargo space. Now this one has the uh, cargo protection system. And basically it's, uh, there's this like carpet piece uh, that's kind of Velcroed down. And then you have these little dividers uh, that are Velcro and you can Velcro them around on this piece right here and you know, position it and customize the space for whatever cargo you're gonna put it back here. It's handy for groceries, stuff like that. Now there's a 12 volt power supply kind of hidden right in here. You can kind of see it. There's a light here on the left side. Cubby hole, hard plastic there. Another light, which is nice. Another cubby hole. Uh, there is a bag holder that extends out. You can also put a net pocket if you like back here. Some tie downs there. Now this lifts up and this cover is just kind of sitting here. It's not really secure or anything. Uh, but there is a spare tire under this cover right here, but there's additional cargo space down here as well. And there's the jack and tools for the spare tire. Now, if you get a shade, uh, you can use a shade on this vehicle. You fold down the third row and then you can put it right in here. And when you're not using it, uh, it does store under this uh, subfloor as well uh, in here. So folding these seats down, uh, the third row is a 50-50 split. The second row is a 60-40 split. So you can add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space, uh, depending on your needs. Uh, or you can fold everything down and just have a huge, massive cargo space back here. Lowering the power lift gate, you just press this button. To start it up, all you need to do is have the key inside the vehicle, hold the brake, and press this button. You don't have to hold the button, you just press it. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You notice the floor mat snaps in place over here, keeping it straight for you. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, and footrest. Nice, plenty of room over here as well. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch right here in the very center, uh, right above the emblem, just reach in. Move it to the left and then lift up on the hood. It doesn't take much energy to lift up the hood. It holds itself up. Uh, it does latch in two places, so it's a very secure hood. So you can see here and here is where it latches, uh, secure down. So that's nice. Uh, there's also insulation there under the hood. There's also seals in the back and the front, kind of helps sealing the airflow and noise, uh, helps out with both of those, but also cooling as well to have control over the airflow. So there's the battery, it's easy to get to. The firewall is completely insulated as well as some heat shielding back there uh, because it does have a turbocharged four cylinder engine. So that turbocharger is back there with the exhaust. This vehicle is powered by a 2.0 liter four cylinder engine, turbocharged as well, paired to an eight speed transmission. It puts out 269 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. Inside of the driver's side doors, just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So we do have the power windows. They're all one touch up and down. Uh, so we can kind of push it, it goes up and down. Same thing for the back doors. It goes all the way down, power window. You can see it over there. And they are privacy glass back there as well. The side mirrors are adjusted here. I just pick a side and adjust it like a little joystick there. It does have the blind spot detection system. The indicator is here on the side mirror as well. 
You have the ability to open up the power lift gate here from the driver's side door. Power seat for the driver. So you have uh, up, down, tilt, all that stuff, as well as a two-way lumbar adjustment. And just a reminder, these are heated seats as well. To the left of the steering column, uh, you do have these touch sensitive buttons for the headlight switch. So uh, you just press this button over and over again and then you change through. So let's go ahead and do it. We got headlights on, parking lights on, off or automatic. And then your front fog lights, uh, they're called all weather lights, uh, are controlled there. So you can turn those on or off. You also have front and rear defrosters as well. Surprise, they're kind of on this side, but uh, that's where they're located. There's also a tilt and a telescoping steering column as well. You lock it in place here. I'm sitting in the driver's seat and I'm checking it out. I'm six feet tall. I have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. Uh, so yeah, this is a little bit too far back. So I have plenty of room, both with knees and also just straight out legroom. Uh, so putting the seat all the way back for me is too much. So if you're a little bit over six feet tall, shouldn't have any problem driving this vehicle at all. So the steering wheel has a little flat bottom here, stitching on the inside, seem, uh, like a synthetic leather, uh, but really nice good thickness and overall feel of the steering wheel. Uh, now it has paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel, kind of go, go unnoticed, but uh, they give the ability to raise and lower the gear depending on your knees, like if you're downshifting, going down a hill, that kind of thing. So here on the left side is you can see it has the volume for the radio. This bottom portion is kind of separate. So this is the radio here. Change to the tracks and do your volume for the radio here. Right above it is the cruise control. Uh, so once you turn it on, you can set, resume, cancel, uh, just like a normal one, but it also has the adaptive cruise control in which you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Uh, you can increase or decrease uh, the distance here, but this is to change the the speed once you set it. Here on the right side, uh, it has the heated steering wheel button, uh, but the rest of this buttons, you have voice recognition as well, but the rest of these buttons correspond to this screen, a very full digital uh, screen. We'll get to that in a minute. Front and rear wipers are here. And then on the left side is the turn signal, as well as the headlight dimmer switch. There's also a button here on the, on the outside right here to quickly go to uh, some of the safety settings that you can turn on or off, like the lane assist or the adaptive cruise control. Using these buttons here on the on the right side of the steering wheel, it has view as well as up, down, left, right, okay. So we're gonna use those buttons to navigate. So first of all, we're just gonna look at the, the screen is, which represents kind of gauges. So you have the RPMs tachometer here on the left, speedometer here on the right. You also have a digital speedometer as well. Um, there is a clock, digital clock, and date which is really nice that helps out a lot sometimes what gear you're in and uh, distance to empty so it has the normal kind of like gauge look to it but if we hit the view button i'm going to just kind of cycle through the view button so you can see the different views that you can have uh, so i hit it one time now the second time goes to this and then there's the third time it goes back to the original view here now if i go scrolling to the right or left uh, then it shows different information here. So if I scroll to here to the to the right then on the right side of the screen we can go up and down and get uh, Change what we want on this side. So if we want no display we can go into the settings as well uh, So let's just see what no display looks like so you can see nothing there in the center All right, scroll down. Let's go to um, this vehicle does not have that navigation uh, activated, but if it did, you were able to show information here on the screen regarding that. So we can go to, we'll go to the acceleration. Uh, so this will give you a little bar letting you know whether you're staying in an eco mode or not. It's got a compass. So yeah, you can customize that. Now on the left side, same thing, you just put, hit the left side button, then you can scroll up and down, and same thing, you can adjust what you want in that, uh, in that side. Let's go to the fuel tank display, we'll do that. Since we're low on fuel, might as well do that. Now if we scroll up and down, uh, without doing the sidebars, then you have the information here in the center, and you can kind of scroll through 
and get different information. So if you just want the digital speedometer or driving data, uh, we can do that or nothing. But I like the clock, uh, considering um, you do have a digital speedometer there on the right, and also you can change that to the uh, the sensor, the digital digital speedometer, and the regular analog style. So that's kind of a quick look at the screen, which is fantastic. It looks great. Uh, they did a great job, I think, with the the clarity as far as seeing it. It's not overly done, but at the same time, it's still stylish and impressive looking to my eyes. Uh, same thing with the screen over here. Really nice, it's a big screen. Now this has the uh, screen protector on it. So it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's not gonna it look a little bit better than this, but you can see it has these buttons here. These are soft touch buttons and they don't take much. To, you just hover your finger over them and, and they make adjustments. So that you have the volume for the radio, uh, temperature for the driver and then the passenger there. Uh, now the volume, you can actually slide it. So you can slide like this, or slide to the left, which is pretty neat. So instead of a knob that you turn, you just slide your finger there. You do have the ability to turn off the radio as well. So this is the home screen. Uh, See, so right here is the split, and you have this screen, this screen, and that's kind of like your phone, where you can swipe side to side and get different information. This is kind of like a widgets in a way. Uh, you have the ability to pair your phone, uh, the radio, play the radio here, um, and then you have you have different presets here, media, you have Bluetooth, uh, and then you can change the source here. Let's say you plug in a device to the USB port, it'll show up here, but right now there's nothing there. So it's there's missing some stuff, uh, but it depends on what you have available will show up under the sources. And then you can get your navigation. This is where it would normally be, but I think you can upgrade navigation uh, doing a software upgrade, I'm not sure. Uh, but you have the diff different option here. You can actually change this to a dark mode, which I really like. We'll go ahead and do that, see what it looks like. Vehicle information here. Driving data, which would be uh, your fuel economy, stuff like that. This, this vehicle only has three miles on it, so nothing's going to be accurate on this screen. You can connect your app, uh, your phones, so Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that kind of thing. Adjust the sound, and then there's your settings here. So yeah, pretty straightforward, easy to use. Uh, system here. Now if you go to the climate control, uh, you just hit over here and then you can change where you want the air to blow, the fan speed, you can put in automatic mode. Uh, you do have the smart climate uh, and then the classic climate, which I have it on now. Let's go to the smart climate here. Let me set the temperature. It also has cooled seats. Uh, I kept mentioning the heated seats. I completely forgot to mention that it has cooled seats here on the front. Uh, it's a three-stage high, medium, and low, heated and cooled seats here in the front. And once again, we have the buttons there below, and they're really easy to press. So once you get used to it, instead of like resting your hand when you're pressing a button, uh, you just can't really do that. Otherwise, you're gonna start pressing buttons down there. All right, so just below that is additional buttons. Um, so this will be quickly go to your climate, so you can hit that. Quickly go to the safety systems pop up here, kind of the status of the safety systems as well. Uh, you hit that button, this is the park in, park out. Uh, so this will actually help you park the vehicle. So when you press that, what you basically what you do is you drive forward next to parking spaces with the turn signal on and it'll tell you to stop and it'll kind of help you park uh, actually using the steering wheel. Hitting this mode button um, will change the, the drive modes. So you have Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Custom. All right, there's a compartment here, opens up. USB-C connections there, charge ports, as well as a wireless charge pad right here and a little storage cubby area. And it's rubberized as well. Cup holders are here. This is the shifter. 
and it's an electronic shifter. This is where we started the vehicle. Uh, we have electronic parking brake. You see it's activated now. It engages the rear wheels. You just hold the brake to deactivate it and press it down. So the shifter, uh, basically you hold the brake and you can press it forward to go in reverse. Um, you have to go through the neutral to get to the reverse. See, so there's the neutral, there's the reverse. Two things will happen, the backup camera will pop up, but also the uh, parking sensors will be active as well. And you'll know what gear you're in because illuminate here, but also show uh, here is here on the screen. Pulling it back will take us in the drive. Pulling it back again will take, put, in, put us into a standard mode so we can use the paddle shifters uh, to change to the gears. Um, the sport mode will be controlled uh, on the screen there, the different modes. A little storage compartment right in here. It does have a little rubberized uh, floor to it, a little pad there. Here's the armrest, kind of rubbery soft, but it is soft, nice and big. You might want to share it with your passenger possibly. Um, so you can lift this up has a little latch there and it doesn't flop back down it kind of stays up wherever you put it and then there's a carpeted interior uh, like a felt carpet here at the bottom nice and thick nice and there is a USB port there and nice compartment to put stuff junk drawer of the vehicle basically now there is a place for wires to go in and out of this compartment right here so right there kind of allows uh, for wires to go in and out. The rear view mirror um, has an auto dim rear view mirror. It's actually auto dimming right now because they have the shade over the light sensor which is located right, uh, right here on this side. Right above that, uh, you do have some lights. Turn them all on, all off. You can have them on with the door or you can turn that feature off if you want to and that's the off light. And then you have road side assistance buttons here as well. These slide buttons right here are for the sunroof and the shade. We'll get to those in just a second. The visor has like a vinyl material that matches the color of the cloth headliner. Has a little light and a mirror, little clip. It also extends out. Okay, so the sunroof. Uh, it does have the panoramic sunroof, huge, but it doesn't block 100% of the light. It allows some light to come in uh, at all times. So go ahead and this right slider here, slide it back like so. And we can slide the shade back. Looks like a huge sunroof. Now this back portion is fixed, the front portion can move, so let's go ahead and press up on it and we can cut, tilt it up, tilt it down. There we go. Just kind of let some air in. We can move it back as well. That's the swipe back motion. Swipe it again. Nope, that's as far back as it goes. Now we can swipe it forward. And I'm going to swipe the shade forward as well. Looking at the visibility there in the back, uh, plenty of windows to look out of. Um, hadn't, I don't, I don't see any problem. And and also like in the past, the previous uh, Atlas, no problem as far as visibility really. Uh, it depends on how much pastures and cargo you have back there though, but. Uh, as far as just regular visibility, looking over your shoulder, looking out the back window, the rear view mirror, that kind of thing, uh, it hasn't had no problem. No, I don't see any potential problems here. Now it does have the parking sensors, the backup camera, um, blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, all that stuff to help you out with driving the vehicle safely. But anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you to East Coast Volkswagen here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Their contact information will be in the description and I'll see you guys next time.